<laughs> oh man. A lot of you guys have asked for this video, and for those of you who don't know what high meat is, I think it's a term coined by Eskimos and the Arctic explorer Bjelmer Stefansson for rotten meat. And many indigenous groups ate rotten meat in, in various forms, you know. The Eskimos would let fish ferment under twigs for a year, and then they'd freeze it and eat it like ice cream. There were, you know, Swiss in the Lachento Valley made cheese. Cheese is a modern example of a fermented rotten food. Uh, there was another group of, I think, uh, Inuit somewhere that they would take a whole seal skin. They'd capture these birds with nets and they'd fill that seal skin up with like dozens and dozens, I think maybe even hundreds of birds. And they'd let that bear that in the ground for a year and they'd just take that out and eat those birds like it was the most delicious thing in the world. And it's called high meat because it makes you feel high when you eat it. And it's like a feeling of energy, like you can run through. I, I like to describe it as I feel like I can run through a, some drywall. And you literally feel like you could run down the street. And I get this feeling when I eat high vitamin foods, not just rotten meat. That's why it got me confused when people started saying, calling it high meat. I'm like, well, I feel high after I eat just liver or organ meats or just super high vitamin foods in general. So I don't necessarily think they have to be fermented. I think it has more to do with the super high vitamin content of the food. That being said, there are benefits to eating foods like this. And, you know, even though they've been present in our evolutionary history from when we used to scavenge corpses and maybe we came up across a skull that was three months old and we ate it, it probably the brain probably tasted like rotten cheese, same with marrow tissue. We've always been scavengers and we've always eaten rotten food. You know, I mean, there's an example of wolves in nature eating completely rotten and putrid flesh. And humans are kind of, have very similar digestive systems to those animals to some degree. We might not eat as incredible volumes of food as a wolf does at once or a bear does at once, but we have those rotten foods present in our diet in various aspects. And some people eat rotten food for every meal of the day and they don't even realize it. They have yogurt for breakfast, rotten food. They have sourdough bread with ham and cheese. All of those foods are rotten for lunch, sandwich. Then for dinner, they have a dry aged steak at a steakhouse, so more rotten food. Literally, more food people can eat is probably rotten and older then people realize it. They just don't know that or understand it or understand fermentation and how big of a role it plays in every food we eat. But as soon as you, you know, as soon as you put some liver in a jar and let it go bad, people get a little crazy, you know? They won't think twice about having that French cheese, you know, that aged old French cheese. And you know, cheese in itself is a great example because people crave it. It has that umami flavor. It's very high in vitamin K2. Uh, that's the main vitamin we look at when fermenting foods and People just say they love cheese, and they really do, and it's a reason that high meat and our taste for rotten flesh, it's just a great example of why that's so apparent even in our culture now. And I don't want, I should do a separate video on cheese and how, you know, there's a difference between cheese made from raw milk with animal rennet and natural cultures versus some modern cheeses now. You know, there's a big difference between those types of cheeses, but I just wanted to mention that. So. What are the actual benefits of eating this higher rotten meat? I mean, we can always speculate bacterial benefits, but really, what happens when a food ferments is the vitamin K2 content increases. And the only foods that really had vitamin K2 were parts of the animal that not everyone might have been able to eat. So in order to feed their whole tribe or group of people, they might have fermented or, rot or rotted certain parts of the animal to stimulate you know, the vitamin K in liver the vitamin K in bone marrow, the vitamin K in brain tissue because not everyone was able to eat those parts of the animal. So, I mean, you know, those people that relishing the rotten fish or the, the rotten birds was probably because of its super high vitamin K2 content. And there's definitely something to be said about increasing the palatability when fermenting a food. There's just so many more beneficial bacteria, the enzymes have broken it down. It's just really weird how this food tastes good, but you can't really describe the taste and the feeling it gives you. So uh, in order to make this, I mean, you pretty much just let meat rot in a jar. I'm, I've had people tell me it has to be fresh meat, not never frozen, but I've never really noticed a difference. I'm not sure how big of a deal that is. This was freshly killed uh, three weeks ago, this lamb, and I just let it sit in my fridge and I unintentionally made this. I wasn't actually planning on doing this, but I decided to make a video on it because you guys keep asking me about it. So. Uh, this is liver, and making fermented liver to me doesn't really make sense because we would have probably eaten the liver right out of the animal as it's the most nutrient-dense part, but 
I, in the case of fermenting and rotting foods, I guess a lot of indigenous groups did rot the whole animal anyway. So this liver, when I tasted it three weeks ago, had a very, it literally had no smell and no taste. Now it tastes, it smells very strongly of like, like pretty much rot. Pretty much rot, like acidic fermentation is what it smells like. Uh, you can really smell it on the liver. This is so weird. That liver tasted like nothing three weeks ago. Now, it has that same taste, but just very super mild livery mineraliness, like almost no flavor at all. And now, it has that same flavor, but a bunch of umami and like, for some reason, like acidity and sourness that I'm like craving almost. It's really, it's really crazy how how palatable and how tasty this is. I had a few pieces earlier because this is the second time I'm filming this, but I could literally eat that whole jar of liver fine. Like, it's not like I'm forcing it down. It actually tastes good and it's enjoyable. There's definitely something to be said about the importance of rotten foods and their speculative vitamin content in our diet. I guess we should answer, are they necessary in the diet? And they're definitely beneficial, but if you're consuming liver a couple times a week, if you have plenty of egg yolks in the diet, if you have plenty of omega-3s from certain high-quality animal foods, I just don't really see it being necessary although most people probably inadvertently consume rotten foods anyway. Uh, it's just something that I never thought was, you know, because what I'm looking at is the vitamin K2 content. That might be exponentially higher in these foods. And is it nice to add them in? If You know, if you want to. Uh, I know it's important to, you're supposed to air these out every few days to a week uh, to prevent botulism because botulism is anaerobic and just having oxygen in this prevents botulism. Uh, guys, I don't recommend doing this. I don't want anyone to get sick. If you are interested in doing high meat, keep in mind your body has to adjust to every food you eat. So if you've never had that liver before, let alone rotten, eat very small amounts of it at once. Uh, you know, if you've never really experienced this high feeling, uh, it doesn't have to be with rotten foods. I feel that when I take a lot of vitamin D3 through a supplement or when I just eat regular liver normally. So. When you eat high vitamin foods and you feel good and you understand what that feels like, you'll understand why you would eat a food like this. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to touch on in regards to rotten foods. It's just crazy how, you know, people don't realize we humans literally are part scavenger. That's part of how we evolved. Not only that, the amount of rotten foods that we see indigenous groups consume, they're present in almost every single one. Then when we look at even modern diets and modern foods that a lot of people eat, from yogurt to ham and cheese sandwiches to dry aged steaks, to fish, to sashimi, you know, so many foods are cured and rotten and older than fresh. If anything, we eat too many rotten foods in our diets now. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions, if you'd like to, you know, reach out to me for like diet or fitness consultations, you know, my email's in the description. Um, and uh, above all, guys, if you'd like to support me, please just share the channel.